So in this video I'm going to show you how I went from this nice sunny day to this horrible dark gloomy scene. So it's all done in Adobe After Effects and quick disclaimer before I start, I'm not any kind of Adobe After Effects guru by any means, um, I'm learning this stuff just like everyone else and just going to be sharing what I've been practicing and learning this week. Also last thing, if you do want to follow along with the tutorial, I'll leave um, down below a link to the clip that I'm using also with uh, the clouds picture and also the assets of lightning which I got from um, ah yeah, Action VFX I got it from their website these lightning assets are free they've got loads of other sort of paid stuff that you can get on there in terms of assets but these particular lightning assets were free so definitely worth going and checking them out all right, so with that being said, let's jump into the computer and get started with the effect. All right, first thing you want to do with the clip selected, replace with After Effects composition. When you're in After Effects, just duplicate the uh, clip layer that you have and rename both the layers, one tracking and the other one, just anything like normal drone clip. With the tracking layer selected, go to animation, track camera. Once the tracking is done, then just increase the size of the track points and find some track points as far in the background as you can so I'm using this on this mountain ridge and select as many track points as you can on this uh, plane right click and create solid in camera and then just play through the footage to just see if that solid stays on the background throughout the duration of the clip so you can punch in for this I punched into 50%, just check to see that it's staying where it should be and it is, so that's fine. Rename the solid to cloud tracking data and switch off the visibility because don't actually need to see the solid. So then bring in your clouds layer, go to the clouds tracking data, transform and copy the position data. Turn on this cube icon for the beach clouds to make it a 3D layer and then copy the position data from the clouds tracking data to the beach clouds layer. And as you can see there, the position data has changed and also, and the clouds layer is now in place of where that solid was previously. All right, cool. So with the beach clouds layer selected, just scale it up and move it into a position of where it's overlaying the actual sky in the scene. And for now we don't need it, so just turn off the visibility of that bit, that um, clouds layer. Next you want to just double clip the normal drone clip layer and then go up here to the top bar and look for the rotoscope tool. So once you've got that rotor brush tool selected, just select the sky and it will make a selection where it's just rotoscoping out the sky. Also make sure you're at the beginning frame of the, the whole entire clip. Alright so once it's done as you can see it's rotoscoped out the foreground layer actually not the sky um, which isn't what we want so all, all you have to do is go to the effects on the normal drone clip roto brush and then invert and uh, as you can see the, the layer has been rotoed out but the only problem is that it's given like these really horrible janky jagged edges on the actual um, masking out which is not what you want so, but it's easily fixable you just go double clip on the layer again on the normal drone clip layer go back to that same icon and this time you'll have refine edge tool select that and just go over the edge of the actual rotoscoping again this is another quite intensive effect so it will take a little bit of time again but once it's done basically what you'll have is it will just go out and try and smooth in almost like smooth and feather that edge to make sure it's not so jagged and harsh. All right, so with that sky taken out, all you wanna do is bring out the clouds below the normal drone clip layer. And as you can see now, the sky has been replaced. Now all you have to do is just put in your sky to the position that you want it to be in so that it looks good to you. Just play around with the scale position, 
X, Y, and Z rotation to make sure that the sky looks how you want it to look. All right, for me, that looks good. So the next thing you want to do is we're going to start the color correction process. So just search for curves in the effects panel and bring that onto the normal drone clip layer. And then just bring down the overall exposure and make some adjustments to the contrast using the curves. Go to the red channel, bring out some of the red because it's at night. So you're going to have less ready colors. It's going to be more of a blue tint overall. Go to the blues, bring the blues up. I also bought on a hue saturation and brought down the saturation a little bit as well. Just play around with that because usually at night the colors are a little bit less saturated. So do the same thing for the clouds layer as well. Just bringing down the overall whites in the sky, making it a bit more contrasty so the clouds look a bit more menacing. Again, bring a bit of blue into the sky and take out maybe a little bit of the reds. Just have a play around with it, see what you like, see if they try and get the clouds in the foreground matching in terms of the color. All right, so once you've done the color correction, just go on to the clouds layer and duplicate it and then just rename the new one to brighten the clouds. Bring in your lightning layer, make it a 3D layer by pressing the cube icon. Go to the clouds tracking data, copy the position information like we did before and then paste it onto the lightning layer and as you'll see it will just put that lightning into the same position as the solid was the original solid that we made so then as we did before with the clouds you just want to reposition this lightning into the scene as we did previously and just use the scale position X, Y, and Z rotation parameters to just position it into the scene as you want. I've just got it in the background here. So it's not really crazy visible, but you can sort of see it because it's like way off in the background. Just rename that layer lightning one, command D to duplicate it so that you've got two layers and you can do this as many times as you want, but I'm just gonna do two strikes of lightning just for the sake of this tutorial. So with the second, layer selected just move it to a different point in the scene and again try to make it look a bit different to the first lightning strike just by moving the scale and rotation and also just move it to a different point in the timeline so that you get your second strike coming a bit later to the first one and then you just want to go to the effects and presets and look for a fast box blur to put on both of the lightning layers and do the blur radius to about two that's what i did just go to the effects and presets and search for exposure and bring that onto the bright and clouds layer then all you want to do with the bright and clouds layer selected is just to create a rough mask around where the lightning bolt is okay so Go to the beginning of where the lightning layer starts. Go to the exposure parameter inside the Brighton Clouds layer. Create a keyframe with the exposures on zero. Go to where the lightning layer is stretched all the way out to its furthest point and set the exposure to around 1.5. Go another keyframe across. and set the exposure to one. Another keyframe across, set the exposure to 1.5 again. Another couple of keyframes across till the end of the lightning and set it to zero so that you get a little bit of a flash of the lightning. And just repeat this process a little for a few keyframes going from 1.5 to one. And then once the lightning's all the way gone down, you can move a couple of keyframes across and set it to zero so that you just get a little bit of a flash of the lightning going up and down rather than just one big flash. And then just feather the mask up to around 600 so that it merges in with the sky. And then yeah, once you've got that sorted, go to where the mask is on the bright and clouds layer and create a keyframe on the mask path just before the first just before the second lightning strike starts, one frame before. 
go to the next frame across from when the lightning starts and bring across your mask that you created, just drag it across and then you'll see a second keyframe has been created. So basically that mask has just been dragged across to the second lightning layer just so that we can do that same effect. So what you want to do is just copy and paste those keyframes from the exposure layer that you've made and just go to the start of the second lightning layer and paste those keyframes onto that part of the timeline and as you can see it will just do the same thing so basically you've just created a flash on the second lightning layer using that same mask and keyframes of the exposure next just go up to layer new adjustment layer and rename it overall exposure and this is basically just gonna light up the whole scene bring it down to above the lightning layers so with the overall exposure layer selected, just bring on the exposure effect the same as you did with the Brighton Clouds layer, just drag it on to the overall exposure and then just go to where the lightning layer starts, go to your exposure on the overall exposure layer and then just go down to the Brighton Clouds layer and copy and paste those exposure keyframes that we just made, go to the beginning of the lightning layer and paste those keyframes onto the overall exposure layer so basically you get the area around the lightning flash as well as the overall uh, image just to give it that impression that obviously the brighter part will be around where the lightning is if it's overexposed as it is in this case just go through each keyframe of the new keyframes that you made on the overall exposure layer and just change the values so i changed them to about half of what they were on the bright and clouds layer so 0 0.5 1 0 0.5 1 and so on just to make sure that you can actually see the lightning flash and it's not too overexposed and then yeah when you're done you'll see that you've just got like an overall flash of the scene as well as the flash around the lightning and all you want to do is just copy and paste those keyframes into the same spot where the second lightning flash starts so that you get the same thing for the second lightning flash and once that's done you have implemented the lightning into the scene and then yeah the last thing that i did i actually found the effect inside after effects which is cc rainfall which is perfect because i basically just found it dropped it straight in on top of the normal drone clip layer and it basically just gives you rain but it does look kind of fake so you just need to play around with the settings a little bit and that's what I did. You can pretty much just copy the settings I did here if you want or just have a play around with it. That's literally what I did was just trial and error on terms of, in terms of the size, the, um, the speed of how the raindrops are coming down and also you can change the wind settings to make it look like um, it's going in a certain direction and also the variation of the drops and everything like that, even the color of it to try and match into the scene so there's a lot of things that you can do within this uh, effect it's literally just a case of playing around with it that's all i did for a, a few minutes and yeah i got something that i think looks fairly decent in terms of rain um, that going in with the light lightning and uh, adding on some sound effects and that's pretty much all i did to get the end result that i've got and uh, here it is Alright guys, so I hope you got something out of that video and uh, if you're having any issues at all then uh, do shoot me over a DM on Instagram and I'll try and help you out. Do feel free to show your support by leaving a like on the video and uh, subscribing if you want to see more stuff like this in the future and I shall see you next time. Take care.